It is 10 a.m. and this is Dr. Leah Tate <clears throat> and I'm calling the September 23rd, 2022 Outreach and Communications Committee meeting to order. Ms. Proteau, can you please call the roll? Good morning. Riscate. Rogers. Here. Tate. Here. Roll is complete. Thank you. Quorum has been established for our committee. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Outreach and Communication Committee. This is our first meeting of 2022, and I appreciate that everyone's taking time out of their schedule to spend with our committee today. We haven't met since September 2021, and I just wanted to remind everyone that the Board of Psychology full board meeting will be held in person November 17th through 18th, 2022 in Sacramento. And as a reminder for the public and all of our stakeholders, the goal of the Outreach and Communications Committee is to provide critical information to all Californians regarding the evolving practice of psychology, relevant and emerging issues in the field of psychology and the work of the board. Can I please open up public comment for the welcome? Absolutely. We are now taking public comment on agenda item two, the welcome. If you would like to make a comment, please type the word comment into the Q&A box in the lower right hand corner of the screen and send that comment to all participants. Dial in users, please dial star three to raise your hand and we'll call on people in the order we have requests. We're going to take just a few seconds now to see if we have a request for public comment. We have a request for comment from Dr. Emus. Hold on just a moment. We're going to send you a request to unmute your microphone. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, please. This is Dr. Marilyn Emus uh, from the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. I just want to tell you how much I appreciate your today's meeting. Uh, meeting again, it seems like it's a long time. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy to be here and to represent our department here. Thank you, Ms. Emus. We're happy you're here also. And that was our only request for comment at the moment. Do you wish to return to the agenda? Yes, I do. And I apologize, Dr. Emus. Moving on to item number three is public comment. For items not on the agenda, the committee may not discuss or take action on any matter raised during this public comment section, except to decide whether to place the matter on the agenda of a future meeting. Mr. Moderator, can you please open up public comment? Absolutely. We are now taking public comment for items not on the agenda. If you would like to make a comment, please type the word comment into the Q&A box in the lower right hand corner of the screen and send that comment to all participants. Dial in users, please dial star three to raise your hand, and we will call on people in the order we have requests. Let us take about 15 seconds now to see if we have a request for public comment. Seeing no request for public comment, do you wish to return to the agenda? Yes, and thank you. Moving on to item number four, I hope that the committee had time to review the minutes from the September 23rd, 2021 meeting. If they're acceptable, I'd like to ask for a motion to approve the meeting minutes. Dr. Tate, hi, this is uh, Dr. Rogers. Um, I just had a quick question about the minutes from our last meeting, it's on, let's see, it's on pages 11 to 12 of our combined packet. Okay. Um, so agenda item 12 starts on page 11, um, but my question is actually on page 12, line 183. This is about the um, digital divide questionnaire 
It says that um, I would work with staff and legal counsel along with CPA to draft the questions. It's been over, well, it's been a year. Um, I don't recall if I was assigned to that task. I, I know that I was assigned to the task for the for your peace of mind guide. Um, but I was just curious about that. So it's more of a question. I'm trying to bring it up. Okay. But if Ms. Sorek, well, I'm yeah, just going to say if uh, staff members. I'm, have. I'm, uh, I have to be honest. I don't remember us assigning that piece to you. I remember right. assigning the brochure and um, I know that we, um, Ms. Chung and I um, agreed that we would work on a draft to bring back to the committee, but mm -hmm. I, and I don't know if it's because it's been so long, but um, this is not um, apologies, but this isn't what happened. Um, you have a draft of a survey um, in your packet today to look at, and then it'll be coming back to the board where uh, usually CPA is uh, a participant, so could provide input there. Um, mm -hmm. And I know they're probably not here today because they have their convention this week. Um, so there is opportunity for input on the draft and the draft is not very long. Um, so I just wanna throw that out there. Apologies for if we, if this is what we agreed to and that's not what happened. Okay, um, thank you, Ms. Sorek. I just wanted to double double check um, because I usually have a running list of my responsibilities and I don't remember that one having been on the list. So I just wanted to double check and make sure that I wasn't actually included in that particular project. Yeah, I, I recall it the exact same way that you were doing the peace of mind because mm -hmm. of your awesome editorial skills. And I remember saying that. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I don't recall it with this piece. What is the most appropriate way to approve the minutes with editing 183 to 185 or wait until, I hate to say next year, <laughs> to approve the, the minutes? What's the best way to move forward if, if Ms. Marks is available? I'm wondering for consideration if, 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 you, uh, if you both and Ms. Riscate um, are in agreement to delete 183 to 185 um, if that's not what we all recollect. Um, and then if Ms. Marks is okay with that, we can amend that out of the minutes. Yes, I um, think because that Because the motion um, was a little more general and applied to, to what we did and, and what we all kind of uh, recollect. Is that, is that okay, Ms. Marks? Yes, that would be okay uh, if you are all in agreement that the motion or the at least the uh, suggested action does not reflect what the discussion was, then you can move to uh, approve the minutes with that amendment or correction done. I just want to be sure that there's a that you're not uh, now saying we're going to do something different and amending the minutes if they're accurate, but if they're not accurate, then go ahead and correct them. So let's do a motion with the amendment or just keep the motion and second on the table and add an amendment. Is it okay for me to move that we adopt the minutes from the last outreach and communications committee meeting with the noted changes on lines 183 through 185? Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. Well, that is my motion. Thank you, Dr. Tate. I can second that motion. <clears throat> um, Mr. Moderator, can you please open up for public comment? We are now open for public comment on the motion. If you would like to make a comment, please type the word comment into the Q&A box in the lower right hand corner of the screen and send that comment to all participants. 
Dial-in users, please dial star 3 to raise your hand, and we will call on people in the order we have requests. And I see a hand from Dr. Rogers. Would you like to speak, or is that a residual hand up? Oh, I am so sorry. That is a residual hand raise. I will lower it now. Thank you so much. All right. And let's take just a few more seconds to see if we have a request for public comment. Seeing no request for public comment, would you like to return to the agenda? Yes, thank you very much. Any other comments regarding the minutes and addendum from the committee members? Oh, just that I'm okay with that change as well. We wanted to. Oh, oh thank you for verbalizing. Um, Ms. Bruteau, can you please call the roll? Scott Tay. Aye. Rogers. Aye. Tate. Aye. Thank you. Perfect. Motion passes and we are moving on to agenda item number five, which is the, strate the strategic plan update. Ms. Sorek, would you like to provide an update for us? Sure. Um, included in your meeting materials is the strategic uh, action plan update. Um, these are implementation items um, from the board's uh, strategic plan. And um, that was uh, the plan that was from 2019 to 2023. Um, within the next year, we will be kind of looking ahead at the board's next five year plan. Um, we typically do that in the fall or winter of uh, the last year of the strategic plan. So uh, during 2023, we will be uh, performing a SWOT analysis and kind of gathering uh, fresh data uh, to guide the board's direction over the next uh, five year strategic plan. So I just thought I'd intro with that real quick. And um, I have updated the action plan with implementation items, um, looking at dates and completion items um, for how we progressed um, over the last year. So uh, Highlighted in a red font is the status on where we are on our strategic goals and objectives. And I'm available for any questions the committee might have. Thank you, Ms. Sorek. Any questions regarding the strategic plan for the committee members? Yes, Dr. Tate, uh, this is Dr. Rogers. Uh, Ms. Sork, thank you so much for um, the information in the strategic plan. I had a question um, on page 34. Um, this is the section that is looking at outreach and education, um, area 5.7, where it talks about um, a campaign plan. Could you describe what a campaign plan is and what that would look like? I was just curious as I was reading through that. So um, what came up during the uh, SWOT analysis um, and kind of was brought to the board uh, that was developing the strategic plan was that there was some confusion about the role of the professional association versus the role of the board and what we who we are and what we do. Um, so uh, one of the objectives that the board came up with was increasing stakeholder awareness of the board and what our purpose um, is and how that may differentiate uh, between the professional association and the board. Uh, so that is uh, developing a campaign plan would be uh, coming up with um, ways in which we could communicate who we are and what we do. Um, so that is something that uh, has been tasked to the outreach and communication committee. So this will most likely be something that will be on the next committee agenda. So uh, just so I don't lose this, um, for items for the next agenda, um, if we can make sure that we um, add this to the next agenda so that we uh, make sure we accomplish this um, in the timeframe that has been identified. 
Does that answer your question? It certainly does. Thank you so much. And sure. I'm looking forward to talking about it at the next uh, committee meeting. Thank you. Cool. Thanks. Ms. Riscate, do you have any um, questions for Ms. Sorek? Uh, no, I do not. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, Mr. Moderator, can you please open up public comment? We are now taking public comment on agenda item five. If you would like to make a comment, please type the word comment into the Q&A box in the lower right hand corner of the screen and send that comment to all participants. Dial in users, please dial star three to raise your hand and we will call on people in the order we have requests. We're going to take just a few seconds now to see if we have a request for public comment. Seeing no request for public comment, do you wish to return to the agenda? Yes, I appreciate that. We are moving on to item number six, the social media update. Mr. Glasspiegel, please. Good morning, committee members. Included in your meeting materials is agenda item number six, which is the social media update. Um, due to changes with the Facebook meta analytics, uh, I am no longer and board staff is no longer able to track likes or followers over time. Uh, so we are able to provide the current number of Facebook followers as of now. Uh, and the previous charts of likes over time and followers over time have been removed uh, if you see them missing. Uh, we are additionally only able to see the most popular posts within the last 90 days and I used to be able to do for a whole year. Um, but included in the meeting materials is our total followers, most popular posts in the 90 days, um, the our Twitter follows, followers and who we are following and total tweets, as well as views for board and committee meetings uh, over 2022 and 2021. Um, and that is it for uh, agenda, item, agenda item number six, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Glass Beagle. Any committee members have any uh, comments or questions regarding the social media update? Uh, I just wanted to confirm. So, um, you're the, you're the one that's in charge of posting and stuff, or is there like an actual person dedicated to social media updates? Generally, go ahead. I was just going to say we kind of round robin this one. Uh, Mr. Glass Beagle um, will sometimes post. Um, sometimes I post. Sometimes Mr. Gage will post. Um, so it just depends on what the item is and who is in the office. But no, we do not have anybody de dedicated to uh, social media or uh, website posting. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Dr. Rogers, do you have any comments for Mr. Glassbeagle or questions? Thank you, Dr. Tate. I was I was formulating a question. I wasn't sure if this was um, appropriate to ask here or not, but I'm just thinking about um, the strategic plan. So I'm sort of going back to item number five, something that I read um, in the strategic plan. I saw that there was um, a plan to Oh goodness, I can't recall exactly, but there was there's a plan to to present um, a YouTube video for some aspect of licensing. I'll have to go back to um, find it exactly. And I think the the metric was how many YouTube views there were of that video. I, I don't think it has happened just yet. So I was just wondering um, for the social media update. I know we have. Um, information from Facebook and Twitter. Do we have a, a YouTube account for the Board of Psychology established already, or is that something that will be established um, as we work on the strategic plan for the videos that were um, listed in item number five? Sorry if that question is unclear. I can speak to that. Okay, uh, great. This Thank is you, Mr. Glassby. No problem. I was going to say this is Jason. Uh, DCA has the YouTube channel that they post all the committee and board meeting uh, board meetings on. But just like I did for um, agenda item, well, 6C, which is the committee and meeting and webcast, uh, we can include the views of those videos when they are done into the social media uh, update. Okay, that would be helpful. Great. Thank you so much. 
No other questions. Thank you, Dr. Tate. Thank you. Mr. Moderator, can we please open up public comment for this item? We are now taking public comment on item six. If you would like to make a comment, please type the word comment into the Q&A box in the lower right hand corner of the screen and send that comment to all participants. Dial in users, please dial star three to raise your hand and we will call on people in the order we have requests. We're going to take just a few seconds now to see if we have a request for public comment. Seeing no request for public comment, do you wish to return to the agenda? Yes, thank you. We are moving on to item number seven, website statistics update. Mr. Glasspiegel. Good morning again. Um, included in your meeting materials under agenda item seven is the website update. Uh, the following pages and information provided are uh, for the date range of January 1, 2022 to September 5th, 2022. Uh, so the first part lists the top five pages, uh, not including our homepage. Uh, of website usage, and then I have the bulleted list at the bottom of the memo page, the first page, which lists the newsletter page, most recent newsletter, continuing education page, laws and regulations page, filing a complaint page, applicant information page, disciplinary guidelines or disciplinary actions, excuse me, page, and then the COVID-19 FAQ page. So I have quarterly numbers for each of those pages throughout the memo. Um, and then after we have all of our legislative and regulatory advisories that were uh, that were we show the views of those advisories from the date of creation of each advisory. So those are cumulative uh, page clicks and, and views. And I'm ha happy to answer any questions. Uh, this is for informational purposes only. Thank you, Mr. Glasspiegel. Any board members or committee members with comments or questions for Mr. Glasspiegel? And thanks for compiling that data for us. Uh, do you know where most of these hits come from? Like, is it from a Facebook post or is this just people generally look at the page every month? Uh, this agenda item is based on the analytics from our website. We have a I don't remember how uh, the Department of Consumer Affairs did it, but they put something in our actual website URL that allows Google Analytics to track the page clicks. And yeah. so we use Google Analytics to track these um, these page clicks. But what uh, what drew people to them, whether it was like a Facebook post, Twitter post, or uh, email blast, I am not sure. Okay. Dr. Rogers, any comments, questions? No comments or questions at this time. Thank you. Thanks. Mr. Moderator, can you please open up public comment for agenda item number seven? We are now taking public comment on agenda item seven. If you would like to make a comment, please type the word comment into the Q&A box in the lower right hand corner of the screen and send that comment to all participants. Dial in users, please dial star three to raise your hand, and we will call on people in the order we have requests. Let us take about 15 seconds now to see if we have a request for public comment. Seeing no request for public comment, do you wish to return to the agenda? Yes, I do. Thank you very much. So we're moving on to agenda item number eight, which is the update on the newsletter. Uh, the Board of Psychology Fall Journal was recently emailed out and is in the agenda materials for your review. And thank you again, Dr. Rogers, for your addition to the journal. And the next journal will be out um, during winter. Ms. Sorek, do you have anything to add? Uh, just available for any questions um, the committee members may have. Um, Perfect. Uh, any questions regarding the newsletter update for committee members? Uh, yeah, this is Shakonda Rogers. Um, I'll just make a quick 
well, two quick comments. Um, one, thank you, Dr. Tate, for your kind words. Um, and secondly, I really appreciated the article from Dr. Horn on guidelines for closing a psychology practice. That's something that's not often discussed, um, what the specific steps are or if there's a framework for that. So I found that to be particularly useful this time around. So I'm really glad that um, Dr. Horn is a contributor to the newsletter from ASPPB. Thank you. I agree with you. I love um, the articles we've had the past few years are, have all been interesting. So I've, I've enjoyed the newsletter. Um, Mr. Scott, do you have any comments or questions? Uh, no, I don't. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Mr. Moderator, can you please open up public comment? We are now taking public comment on the matter. If you would like to make a comment, please type the word comment into the Q&A box in the lower right hand corner of the screen and send that comment to all participants. Dial in users, please dial star three to raise your hand and we will call on people in the order we have requests. Let us take about 15 seconds now to see if we have a request for public comment. Seeing no requests, would you like to return to the agenda? Yes, and thank you, Mr. Moderator. We are moving on to agenda item number nine, outreach activities update. Ms. Sorek, please. Thank you. Um, included in your meeting materials um, are the stakeholder meetings uh, conducted in uh, the current fiscal year. Um, and I just wanted to add that uh, we have another couple that if the committee is okay with it, I will report those items um, and then we can include it in the board meeting uh, report out materials from the committee meeting. Um, I wanted to add that I attended the uh, BARC meeting, which is the uh, meeting of um, my colleagues in other states and Canadian provinces on August 16th. Um, the topics for discussion included emotional support animals, um, that there uh, was a theme or pattern seen of um, licensees not assessing but referring for emotional support animals. Um, they talked about the National Practitioner Data Bank Compliance Audit. Uh, the in focus report, which you'll be hearing about later in the agenda today, the master's degree task force, which um, is being established, and then there was a roundtable discussion. Um, additionally, in October, on October 13th, uh, Dr. Clinton Gardner, president of California Southern University, invited board president Tate to be the commencement speaker at the Grove in Anaheim, California. And there's expected to be approximately 100 to 120 graduates. Um, and this is a first in-person graduate uh, graduation for this institution since uh, the COVID pandemic. So I wanted to report on those items. Um, and then also just wanted to touch on our participation. Um, Mr. Glassbeagle, Ms. Hoganson, and myself participated in a webinar that was hosted by the California Psychological Association. Um, and this was in regards to the new continuing professional development regulations. Uh, there were 355 individuals that participated in the webinar. Um, so really great attendance there. Um, we stayed on for about an hour and a half um, and there were several questions um, in that webinar that we were able to field and some more follow-up that we've been doing with CPA since uh, the webinar happened. So that is the report on outreach activities and I'm available for any questions the committee may have. Thank you for the report, Ms. Sorek. Thank you for elaborating on the CPA webinar. I was a little curious about how many people joined that call, but that sounds amazing <laughs> to have that many people ask questions and um, tells you how, how interested people are about the CPD. Any other 
committee member comment or questions regarding the outreach activities update? Yes, Dr. Tate, this is Dr. Rogers. Um, Ms. Sorek, thank you so much for uh, your thorough report. Um, two things, one, Dr. Tate, you'll have to let us know how um, your speech goes on, was it the 13th of October? I can't remember if I wrote that down correctly. Um, and then secondly, uh, Ms. Sorek, when you were um, discussing uh, the CPA webinar uh, regarding the CPD rollout. Um, I was just curious if there are plans to have any additional webinars once the new model goes into effect. So it sounds like you had one as we are anticipating it, but are there any plans to continue to have um, those kinds of uh, engagements with licensees uh, if they have continued questions? as um, we figure out how to navigate the new model? You know, we hadn't planned on anything, but um, that's something we can certainly follow up um, with. Uh, it. I, I wasn't expecting that kind of engagement and attendance, um, so that was Phenomenal. Um, we do plan to do um, a frequently asked questions um, a month into when the regulations are in effect. Um, and then we're also planning to do a YouTube video, which will lay out um, how the uh, continuing professional development regulations um, are going to be implemented. Um, I, we don't have any plans on that, but we can. That's something we can certainly um, explore. We we haven't done a webinar ourselves, but I mm -hmm. I think it's it really presents a, a nice opportunity to um, engage with our stakeholders and um, you know still be within our fiscal framework of mm -hmm. not traveling. So sure. um, I I'm certainly open to it. Um, Mr. Glassbeagle, did you have any thoughts about that? I mean, it's we could probably do it on WebEx. I, I agree. It seems like it should be um, easily done, whether we do it ourselves or or work with CPA again. I, I think we can definitely come up with some. And as I'm kind of thinking out loud, I'm wondering if um, it might be an opportunity if we did a webinar once our FAQ and YouTube video um, are ready that we could use it as an opportunity to launch those two items. And then after the launch, we can be available for any questions. Oh, that sounds like a great idea. I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. okay. And um, I also had the question about the FAQs Will you take any of the questions that may be asked or were asked um, during the webinar if those will also maybe be included in frequently asked questions? Yeah, and Mr. Glassbeagle can speak a little bit more to this, but our thought was that for especially some of the questions we did not get to, um, mm -hmm. if we can mm -hmm. compile the questions and if there are running themes, we can try and address those in the FAQs. That's exactly correct. We are um, working right now currently with the FAQs or the remaining comments that CPA had left over to make sure um, that we compartmentalize and address those. Um, and I was actually reaching out to Ms. McCochran just to let her know that we are discussing this right now so that way we can make notes to um, Keep in mind to schedule a webinar. Did I answer all the questions? Yes, you did. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. My pleasure. Thanks, Rogers, for a good suggestion. Ms. Riscate, do you have any questions or comments about outreach activities? Um, no, it all looks great and great suggestion as well. Perfect. Mr. Moderator, can you please open up public comment? Absolutely. 
We are taking public comment on agenda item 9. If you would like to make a comment, please type the word comment into the Q&A box in the lower right hand corner of the screen and send that comment to all participants. Dial in users, please dial star 3 to raise your hand and we will call on people in the order we have requests. We're going to take about 15 seconds now to see if we have a request for public comment. Seeing no request for public comment, do you wish to return to the agenda? Yes, thank you. Perfect. We are moving on to agenda item number 10. <clears throat> this is the presentation by the Association of State and Provincial Psychology Boards on their Center for Data and Analysis on Psychology Licensure in Focus Edition. Stacy Camp is the Assistant Director for the Center. Are you ready to give us uh, good information today? Yes, I am. I'm going to share my screen so you can see my presentation. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Can everybody see it? Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you. Just making sure. Um, I'm delighted to be presenting on the Center for um, Data and Analysis on Psychology Licensure and the ASPPB in Focus 2021 edition. So the purpose of the center is to collect and analyze um, data for the regulation of the profession of psychology, provide timely and relevant data to psychology licensing boards, create publications and presentations focused on licensure portability and telehealth. And you can find the data from the center on our webpage at ASPPBcenter.org. Um, the center is broken into sections on, and that includes the ASPPB in focus 2021, which is on the homepage of the webpage. And then at the top, you'll see some tabs that says snapshot, focus, addition, and then the additional resources tab. And I'm gonna take you through some of these sections in the following slides. So the ASPPB in focus um, 2021 is our annual report on psychology licensure requirements in the United States and Canada. We're happy to introduce the second annual edition of the ASPV in focus publication. This year's in focus includes information on 50 jurisdictions for the year of 2021. And the in focus publication is what drives the ASPV center website. So what is the ASPV in focus? One of the key components for gathering this data is the annual sidebook survey we send out to our jurisdictions. The sidebook data is collected through a survey completed by each of ASPPB member boards and questions pertaining to topics including education, supervised experience, exams, fees, renewals, continuing education and development, and other pertinent information about psychology licensure requirements. As mentioned on the slide before, we had 50 jurisdictions complete their sidebook for um, for 2021, and we're working to gain participation from the remaining 15 jurisdictions for 2022. And we are going to be doing it a little different for 2022 and not having the our jurisdictions fill out the survey completely again. We'll just be able to log in and update um, and make any necessary changes. And we think this will be more efficient and give us better participation in our future sidebook surveys. And also included in the in focus are three separate focus sections that concentrate on the um, psychology interjurisdictional compact known as PICAP, um, the EPPP, and then the ASPPB disciplinary data system known as DDS. The spotlight section is designed, so this is what it looks like on um, the website, um, and it also breaks it down in the in focus document. Um, it's designed to give you the big picture view on of psychology licensure in the United States and Canada on the number of licenses, license types, exams, licensing fees, education, supervised experience, renewals, and continuing education. I'm going to take you through a few, a couple of them on the next slides. So the licensing fees, this is um, an example of psychology licensing boards may charge an assessment to applicants and licensees. And this is a breakdown of the 2021 respondent 
fee information by the minimum, the average, and the maximum. On the ASPVCenter.org website, you can take a closer look at the breakdown of the fees by, the, by jurisdiction, as well as a fee schedule by jurisdiction. And then here is um, continuing education. This section breaks down how many hours of continuing professional development and continuing education in each renewal period. And then we'll move into the snapshot section. So this is what it looks like on the ASPV Center website. And it has a drop down. So you're able to click on the jurisdiction that you would like to, to view. And it gives you a closer look at education, supervision, exams, renewals. And then I will show you an example. And I have California here. So this is what each of these looks like. And these are included also in the in focus document. So education, supervision, exams, and then renewals. And we have it all broken down for each of our jurisdictions. So the focus section is SIPAC, EPPP, and DDS. And this is a, an example that we have for SIPAC. It breaks down the states that were effective as of January 1 and the total introduced and versus enacted legislation by year. And then as of right now, we are collecting EPPP data on the total EPPPs administered per year. Currently, we have a record from the past 20 years, so we'll just keep adding to that each year. Another data point collected for EPPP is the first time and repeat EPPP takers for 2021. And then our top disciplinary um, data Reason, disciplinary reason types within the past six years, which include anything from negligence, conviction of crime, violation of federal and state statutes, regulations and rules, or sexual misconduct or unprofessional conduct. Another data point we collect is the disciplinary action types taken per year within the past 10 years. These include reprimands, probations, um, suspensions, etc. So on the ASPPB Center page, we have an additional resources tab. This um, features the endnotes that you can find actually at the back of the InFocus document, which explains more details on some of the data points. The list of survey questions is also on the uh, additional resources page. And then also the survey completion dates and the additional publications. Currently, we have archived the, the first edition of our In Focus publication, and that's for 2020. And so that is actually inside the additional publications section. So if you want to take a look at that. ASPPB has, um, this past spring, developed a research committee to help support the ASPPB Center. The research committee is tasked with carrying out research to support the center's initiatives and independently generating research ideas and responding to requests and be the liaison with other ASPPB committees around research and provide white papers. When uh, the research committee has met one time and their first project right now is get, gathering data on sunset reviews as a possible informational source. Currently, they believe that the only, that only our US members must participate in a sunset review, but they're hoping that more data gathered as part of this project would be useful to all of the, our SPPB members. And so the Center for Data and Analysis on Psychology Licensure and the ASPPB in focus is supported by the Health and Services Administration of the US Department of Health and Human Services under our grant number for licensure portability for the licensure portability program. The grant is currently from 2019 to 2024, so we're in the third year, and we have seen a lot of traction from this project. That includes my brief presentation on the ASPV in focus publication and the center. I want to thank you for your time, and if you have additional questions after today, please feel free to email me or you can email Janet as well, and we'll be happy to answer any questions you may have, and I can answer any questions you may have now. Hi there, it's Leah Tate. Um, I, just an amazing amount of information. I mean, that, that was that was incredible. <laughs> Every slide just had so much data. Um, 
So my question is, so you just said that the grant started in 2019. Does that mean there was a grant before that lapsed or this all started in 2019? Um, I think that the this one was a new one. Uh, there was previous grants. I, let me, I will check with Janet and get a 100% answer on that one. I was just curious because I, I love seeing all of that data um, laid out and you flip through them so quick, but it's it's a lot to take in. But I'm I do trying to think it. back on when we were doing it because I remember I, I, I remember that the, the um, Taja was originally the, the one that uh, got this grant with Janet, so <laughs> she was able to. She well, might have a more of that history. Yeah, just thank you for the presentation, and I <laughs> love that kind of data. It's so juicy, you know. So I'll I'll open it up to the committee members if they have any comments or questions. Okay. Uh, hi, Dr. Tate. This is Dr. Rogers. Um, Ms. Camp, thank you so, so much for your presentation. I'll just piggyback on what Dr. Tate said. I found the information fascinating. Um, in California, uh, I am always curious about what is happening in other jurisdictions. And right. so this is so well laid out and answered all of my questions about um, fees and uh, supervision. Uh, everything about the practice um, of psychology um, was captured so well. So I'm deeply, deeply appreciative of all of your hard work. So thank you so much for um, the document. Thank you for your work and thank you for your presentation today. Thank you. Ms. Riscate, do you have any comments or questions? Or... Oh, no, thank you. It was a great presentation. <laughs> Perfect. Mr. Moderator, can we please open up public comment? Absolutely. We are now taking public comment on the presentation. If you would like to make a comment, please type the word comment into the Q&A box in the lower right hand corner of the screen and send that comment to all participants. Dial in users, please dial star three to raise your hand and we will call on people in the order we have requests. And our first co request comes from Arasali. And um, I'm going to read what's written first and then give an opportunity to uh, uh, say it in his own words or her own words. Um, I've read the full report, and I'm wondering if you could speak to the demographic data, particularly related to the passing rates for BIPOC test takers. And we're sending you a request to unmute your microphone. Are you able to hear me? Yes, go ahead, please. Okay, perfect. Hi, good morning. This is Dr. Araceli Lopez, and I'm licensed, newly licensed in California. And I am a multiple test taker. I passed the EPPP on my fifth attempt. And it wasn't until I um, reached out for different tutors and, and different programs. And, um, and so in, connecting with a lot of other peers, especially, um, you know, uh, people of color, black BIPOCs. I'm wondering if there is any publicly available data that speaks to the, perhaps the adverse impact that is happening for our, our BIPOC community. Um, we're really needed in the community. I've spoken to, you know, so many people, over 20 people at least, um, and there's a lot of, you know, uh, there's a big community of repeat test takers. And I did read the full report. I, I stumbled upon the website. I think it's excellent. It's beautifully designed um, and presented. And I did not see any data. I don't know if I missed it or not, um, but I would like for, um, if anybody can speak to that and also to the, um, I also saw the meeting, the last meeting that talked about the multiple test taker data for the California Board of Psychology, and there is a lower passing rate in 2021 in comparison to uh, even when COVID was active. And um, the data kind of looked like we were more people were passing because of the color code, but actually more people are not passing. And a lot of us are low income, first generation, I'm a Latina Spanish speaker. My community needs me. And it took me about five years to get licensed. And so I'm wondering if anybody could speak to that. Thank you. Uh, 
I know currently um, our test data has come from our um, test department at ASPPB. So I, I can take that feedback back also to Janet and to, um, to Marianne. And I think that that is an excellent um, possibility of adding that to our in focus document and the center website. Thank you. And just to give you some, some context, um, even in my own study group and a lot of people that I've, you know, spoken to via social media, um, people are having suicidal ideation because they're not able to pass this exam. That is the gravity of, of the impact of the exam. And I, we just want to understand what is going on. Why are we not passing? These are top of the field, neuropsychologists, child psychologists, myself. I went to a PhD program, research one, top of training in the country with a master's in public health. And despite my best efforts, I wasn't able to pass and I struggled and I didn't have the funds um, and I was tapped out financially. And right. it's really, it's, it makes me so sad to know that psychologists are having suicidal ideation over the fact that they cannot pass this exam and their livelihood is impacted. I know that I've had loss of income, so many of us and my community has needed me and I have not, and everybody was trying to send me referrals, but I, I had to say, I'm so sorry, I'm not licensed, I can't take them. I've been to um, a community, um, you know, um, I work a lot with community health workers, promotores de salud, and one of their reports said that there aren't enough clinicians, especially, you know, Spanish speaking bilingual providers. And I had to speak up and say, hey, you know, the reason is because we're getting stuck in the licensure pipeline. And then that affects, you know, our, our income. So for example, when I was asking for a raise in, as a, as moving from a behavioral health therapist and transitioning to a psychologist position, they were offering me a rate from the date that my license was issued when I've been in the field for 15 years. And so there is no way that I can catch up to my counterparts, to my white counterparts who we worked in the same place. And it wasn't until I noticed, wait a minute, the white folks are passing, but the brown girl, the Asian girl, and the Latina girl are still not passing. What is going behind? you know what's going on here because we internalize that and we think oh you know the imposter syndrome kicks in and then we start thinking that there's something wrong with us that we're not the 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 best clinicians you know how did we even get here so we start having those thoughts when in reality we are top of our game we i can't tell you how many incredible Latina, Jamaican, Navajo, um, Mexican American, uh, Dominican, so many different uh, women in particular, and even some men um, that, you know, I was unemployed and underemployed for quite some time because I was not able to get a job because I wasn't licensed. And then I was overqualified because I had a doctorate degree. And so I really struggled with this process and I would like some data to report on this because if we're about health equity, you know, APA, ASPPB, all the different boards of psychology, given the need of our communities and currently post COVID, you know, it, it, there, there is inequity happening. And I would just like, as a data person, I would like to understand um, more of that. So I think the report is fabulous and I think it would be really key to be able to report on those numbers. Thank you. I may also um, bring this to our research committee as well. We're supposed to be meeting, we're still having some scheduling conflicts, but as right now in November of this year. So that would be a really great topic to discuss at the, our next committee meeting. Great, thank you. You're welcome. And, and how can we be informed or participate in this process? Because I know many of us are have the very same questions and many are not able to attend because some of them are working. Uh, but how right. could we be involved in this process? Um, if you'd like to be involved, you can um, my email at scamp at ASPV.org and I would love to um, um, work with you on that and any of your um, ideas and feedback. We also have on the ASPPB Center website, there is an email page where you can submit research, proposed research projects that okay. is on there as well. 
Okay, wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much for the comments. And I'm sure that with all the data, they can pull some more. So <laughs> Thank you. Somewhere. Um, thanks. Next request comes from call in user three. Caller three, we're going to send you a request to unmute your microphone and you're going to dial star six to unmute. Hello, I'm Dr. McCullough and you can hear me, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, this is my second time um, contacting a board, joining a meeting. Um, the first time I did, it was, I wasn't very successful in getting my questions answered. Um, I was prompted to call because I had failed the EPPP in November of 2020. And so January 2021, um, I wanted to know some questions because it was a very traumatic event in failing or not passing the EPPP. I'm very competent. I'm very good at what I do. I was um, working a job that I absolutely love, which was in Los Angeles in the geriatric, uh, as a geriatric psychologist, working in um, board and cares um, for individuals that had no income or very little income. And I thrived in that experience so much so that once I got licensed, I would be able to um, work there as a, psych a licensed psychologist which would increase my um, income because to get this job, I had to take a tremendous financial cut. I had to survive on my retirement account. And that retirement account paid for the testing fees, the testing schools. Um, so anyway, it was very, um, it was very, very traumatic that I did not pass because uh, I was financially in dire straits. I lived in downtown Los Angeles. It was very expensive. COVID was very hard and it was a very scary, scary time. And in retrospect, I should not have taken the EPPP because of the stress I was under. But I had confidence in myself and I thought I can do this. I spent two years studying for it. I am very well capable. Somebody wants to hire me. I can do this. And it didn't happen. And so I wanted to know, and I and I have to say I also have seen the in focus presentation. And I went there for these these questions. So I the questions I want to know are have already been echoed by the last caller. And it's just basically why is there no data on how um, many times the early psychologist has to retake the EPPP. Um, and why aren't there studies about the adverse uh, impact that the uh, EPPP has claims on? There have been studies in New York and Connecticut by Sharpless and Barber. Um, the boards know about the studies because the researchers have contacted them. Absolutely. I'm going, I just wrote those next, those additional questions that you had that you think that, that you, you would like to see. Um, so this has been, last year was our first edition of doing this. And then we, we took it over, um, our, I took it over last year, um, this past summer. And so we are still building off of this. So we are very open to adding any more, more data and more in depth going even further into it. So I, I definitely think these are very good um, points of feedback for us. Thank you. Um, the other question I had was um, why um, there's also claims that um, there's a higher pass rate for PhDs as opposed to PsyDs. That would be something else to, to study into. Um, and I've also um, have composed 
part of my process in trying to figure out what the heck just happened to me after the EPPP was to do research. And that's where I got the questions that I've presented with you as well as others. And I will be sending that to the board um, and hopefully I will get answers because the last time I spoke to the board, basically I was told to go ask the test makers, ASCBB. And I, I, didn't, I didn't accept that because the board makes me, any early psychologist, take this test. So I think the board needs to understand these questions as well and be able to make their reasoning on these questions public. Thank you for your time. Next, we have a request from Diana. Hold on just a moment. We're going to send you a request to unmute your microphone. And just a reminder for all commenters that we are um, commenting on the presentation by Stacy Camp um, on data and analysis of ASPPB, the In Focus edition. Just a reminder. Thank you. All right, Diana, we're going to send you another request to unmute your microphone. All right, give us just a second here. I'm going to pull up a technical slide and uh, then while we're waiting, let's uh, let's take another comment from Arcelli. Hold on just a moment, please. Arcelli, we're going to send you a request to unmute your microphone. Oh, thank you. I just wanted to add to Dr. McCullough, I believe, um, that I think multiple test takers should be involved in this process. I think from, um, so I've experienced a lot of you know, micro invalidations, microaggressions, micro fill in the blank um, from people who have passed on the first attempt and um, whether it's intentional or unintentional. So I think that multiple test takers were a big population and we should um, be included in this process and especially how, especially since EPPP2 is being rolled out, it's implemented in two states, I believe, and how that is an additional barrier to licensure. And, you know, I've even considered before finally passing the exam, I considered, you know, changing careers after $180,000 in debt and after spending, you know, 10, 12, you know, 15 years, actually, since I started in 07, this field, this, this field. And so I really do think that we really need to be heard. We really need to be included in this conversation. Um, because we're creating more barriers instead of making more access. And because of that, what's happening, because I'm also an entrepreneur, I had to be an entrepreneur, people are coming into our space and they are claiming, so all these better help, all these um, apps, um, I'm, I'm in tune to what's out there. And these companies, these tech companies are getting into our space and I don't know how much regulation they have, but the more and more that, you know, we don't have access as, as a psychologist, I studied this, right? Um, there are other people that are coming into the space that is also, you know, um, I don't want to say the word cheapening our livelihood, but they are um, providing services, telling themselves as more you know, affordable, more accessible. And um, we don't know, I personally don't know, I see some of these companies and I'm like, wait a minute, how are you vetted? Have you even gone through our process? So this is also a threat to, you know, the industry. And so I think that this, this is a really big concern that has a big magnitude. And so I, again, multiple test takers should be included in this process. Thank you. Before you go forward, Mr. Moderator, can I make a comment, please? Absolutely. Perfect, thank you. Um, I just wanted to emphasize if a previous speaker has made comments that you absolutely agree with, it is perfectly fine to make a public comment and say, I agree with the previous comments that have been said. 
Go ahead, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. All right. We appear to have lost uh, Diana, um, who had a question about uh, qualitative data. So if they reconnect, we'll uh, try and come back to them. In the meantime, uh, Christina Cortez, looks like you have a request and we're sending you a request to unmute your microphone. Um, this meeting will have minutes in writing so that we can review the responses that were given verbally to review the entire meeting. Yes, minute, minutes are taken at every meeting. And available to attendance? Absolutely, it's available to the public. Where might I be able to see those? This is Jason, if I could um, add that these minutes will be a uh, draft and not available until they are ratified by the committee at the next meeting, which will probably be, which will definitely be sometime in 2023. And then they will be posted to the board's website um, in it attached to this meeting date, which is the board website where you can see all agendas, meeting materials, and minutes is psychology.ca.gov. And then if you um, look on the right hand side for quick hits, the first link under quick hits is the board meetings, and then you can see all of the materials for 2022 and then uh, previous years below that. And then when we have one for 2023 on there, it's usually at the very top above 20 or right below the 2022 header. So you can navigate easily to a future uh, future item and um, the video. Prior to the minutes being available, you will be able to access the um, the recording that is happening right now. So that will be added probably within a week or two uh, okay. before the minutes. That's and it'll helpful. be on the same page. Got it. Thank you so much. No problem. That appears to be all of our requests for comment at the moment. Uh, do you wish to return to the agenda? Yes, and thank you very much. We are moving on, but before we do that, I'd like to say thank you to Stacy Camp for your presentation and uh, the uh, lively conversation. But look like you have Dr. Tate, I'm, I'm sorry. This is Dr. Rogers. I actually have a couple of questions before we move on, if that's permitted. Absolutely. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the first question is for Mr. Glass Spiegel um, regarding the posting of um, the this particular meeting where it will be available. Is that something that can be posted on our social media um, so that if folks who are not in this meeting um, but might be following the board board of psychology might want to access this, they'll be able to access it in various ways other than just through the website. So using social media to drive traffic to this particular link so people can review this. Is that a yeah. possibility? Yeah, we can have a, a social, once there are, once the videos are up on YouTube, we mm -hmm. can have a social media post that okay. links directly to the YouTube video instead of directing like through our website or anything sure. like that. Um, or we could direct it through our website where they would click on the link uh, at the meeting there, but we can also go right to the YouTube link uh, through social media. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. No um, so that's the first question. And then uh, my second question is for Ms. Camp, if she's still on the call. Um, I really appreciated the comments um, from participants um, in today's meeting. Thank you all so much. Uh, my question, and maybe it's um, putting the cart before the horse, but I am sort of curious. So let's say that uh, the center does this research uh, that folks are asking about, which I think is incredibly valuable. Uh, whatever the data reveals, is that something, of course, that you'll share with uh, the various jurisdictions, but will you then make um, specific recommendations based on the data or will 
um, the information gained from the data be left up to the jurisdictions to decide um, what, if anything, needs to be done. Just curious if you had any thoughts about that. Um, I don't want to be like 100% say for sure mm -hmm. if we we'll recommendations. I know that some of it is writing white papers and all of that. Uh -huh. Okay. But I'm thinking that um, most likely it'll definitely be something that goes to, you know, the, our jurisdictions as well. And um, I will double check with that on Janet um, because she's the chair she, um, mm -hmm. of the research committee meeting. Um, research committee at ASPPB. So I'm going to double check with her on that one and make sure. Okay, great. Uh, I just wanted to uh, put that out there for consideration. Thank you so much, Ms. Camp. I appreciate it. You're very Here's welcome. All of, all of my questions and comments. Thank you, Dr. Rogers. Um, I'm looking at the time. I'm wondering if we should just need to take a 10 minute break and we can resume at 1120 and pick up on agenda item number 11. Thank you. Hello everyone, it's 11.20 and we are back from break. Ms. Pruto, can you just call the roll to make sure everyone is back? Yes. Riscate? Here. Rogers? Here. Kate? Here. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone is back. Quorum is established. And we're going to pick up with agenda item number 11, review and propose edits to board publication for your peace of mind, a consumer's guide to psychological services. <clears throat> At our last meeting, Dr. Rogers, this is where she was delegated <laughs> to work with staff uh, to edit this pamphlet. Thanks to everyone for all the hard work. Um, Dr. Rogers or Ms. Sorek, would you like to give us a brief update or comment on the project? I can go ahead and get started on this one and then um, hand it off to Dr. Rogers um, for uh, additional support on the item. Um, so the uh, Dr. Rogers met with staff and legal counsel to go through um, as part of the strategic plan um, to review all of the board publications. Um, to review the uh, For Your Peace of Mind publication and included in your meeting materials is an updated draft. Um, and I will hand it off to Dr. Rogers to provide any additional um, insight and then we can uh, go through the document. Thank you so much, Ms. Sorek. Um, I really enjoyed being uh, tasked with uh, this project and enjoyed working with board staff on it. So um, just a few comments on this document uh, that everyone has hopefully gotten a chance to read through. So my approach in working on the document uh, with board staff was to consider language that would uh, be easily understandable and relatable to the everyday reader and consumer of psychological services. So uh, my attempt was to soften the language a bit, uh, reduce any jargon that might feel confusing um, or esoteric to the reader, uh, and provide some straightforward concepts that would give the reader a clearer understanding of what psychologists do um, in their line of work and also how to approach their own care. So that was the framework that um, that I used as we went through and made some edits to the document. And um, I guess we can go through step by step to see if folks have questions or comments about um, any particular piece of um, this guide. So I'll hand it back over to you, Ms. Sorek. Okay, um, if uh, Mr. Burke can pull up the document, um, what we can do is try and just go through uh, page by page and ask uh, for any questions or comments. And if there aren't any, we can just continue to go through the document if that works. That's perfect. At the uh, Mr. Burke at the bottom of the screen next to the mute and unmute, there should be a share button that I've made you presenter.
Okay, great. So um, starting out with page one, are there any questions or comments about the table of contents uh, page? Hi, this is Mrs. Cate. I have a comment about just the opening sentence. I think it should be acknowledged that some people don't know what they're seeking treatment for, but they know they're just off a little. Um, so maybe like perhaps you are feeling a little off and seeking treatment, but not sure for what. Others know that they're going through depression, stress, or anxiety. Something acknowledging that, because I think when you're like, you're down and out and you're like, but I'm not depressed because I'm still functioning. <laughs> um, you might seek therapy, but you might not think it's for you if you see this where it seems like you should know what you're seeking treatment for. Did you have a particular paragraph or? Yeah, that very first paragraph edits? where it says, perhaps you are seeking treatment for depression, stress, or anxiety. Um, like adding something in there, acknowledging or maybe you're not sure, but you're feeling a little off. Can you see where that is, John? The cursor's right on it. Uh, the very, very, very first sentence, perhaps you are seeking. Yeah. And then if the committee members want to chime in or if we're okay with that edit, we can move on. I completely understand what Mr. Scott is trying to to capture. I'm trying to think of a, a better word, a little off. Um, the wordsmith is Dr. Rogers. What do you... <laughs> I, I am looking at the document right now. I'm actually looking at um, the third paragraph. So the second one that struck out where it says every year, thousands of Californians uh, visit professional psychologists. Um, I wouldn't necessarily um, put the exact sentence, but something along that line, right? So people seek um, the oh, services oh. of psychologists for a variety of reasons. Perhaps it's, you know, depression, right. stress, or anxiety, or you may recognize that, um, trying to think of how to say it, but something along the lines of something just doesn't feel quite right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. What, what would you like me to maybe put some of this? Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> Mr. Burke. Sorry about that. Uh, well, what does, what does the committee think about taking the first piece of the third paragraph. So every year, um, yes, thousands Start of psychologists. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Burke, if you could scroll back. Yeah, you, you are perfect. Yep. Yep. So the third paragraph here, but the second one that struck out. So the where it starts with every year, thousands of Californians visit uh -huh. professional psychologists for help. Okay. Or, that and maybe sentence. that could be the, the first sentence. So yes, help yeah. period. Like open, with that. open with that. Okay. I'm not sure if Yep. Uh yeah, so I would just um end the sentence at the word help on the first line. Every year thousands of which which yes, line? Sorry, that that line. Uh huh. That one there. Every year, thousands of Californians visit professional psychologists for help. Period. Okay. And, and then, then remove the rest. Okay. Mm hmm. Perhaps. Uh, You're okay. seeking treatment for depression, comma stress, comma anxiety, mm -hmm. comma, or personal problems. Or just, I'm trying to get away from the feeling <laughs> a little off. Sure, yeah. um, you could also bring back 
the second part of the first sentence that was cut off. So it could be perhaps you are seeking treatment for depression, stress, anxiety, or a better understanding of yourself mm -hmm. and your personal problems. Sure. Okay. Would that capture it for you, Mr. Scotte? Yeah. Perfect. And I, I would say um, of yourself um, or any challenges you may be facing. I like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Riscate. That's great. Thank you. Okay. We can, if there aren't any uh, further edits on page one, we can move on to page two. Are there any um, suggestions or edits on page two? Not for me. Ms. Riscate, any edits on page two? Okay, then moving on to page three. Any comments or edits here? Um, so under bill of clients, bill of rights, you as a client have the right to the first bullet point. Um, I, I think saying where they can request and receive information from is important. So it's not something that needs to be searched for. So you have a right to request and receive information about the therapist's professional capabilities, but then it's kind of like. Where do I do that? Like, what does that mean? Like, do you ask the therapist themselves, the office, or is this? Are you saying include the BOP website for the? Um... If that's where they get it, yeah. So request and receive information. Uh... So right now the board um, only has um, where they receive their qualifying degree um, and we're still working on going back from early times um, to include that information for new licensees. Uh, that information should be included on the license lookup, but it would only be their qualifying degree institution. Um, anything about training, experience, professional association membership, that would be on their end. Um, so that may be through their website, um, through any materials they have in like Psychology Today or any other publications. So um, we would not be uh, overseeing that kind of information. Ms. Sorek and uh, Ms. Riscate, I'm wondering if we could um, modify this sentence. Um, I'm still kind of formulating it, but something to the effect of, uh, let's see, you as a client have the right to uh, request and receive information from, uh, let's see, from the psychologist about their qualifications which include which may include the following does that uh, make sense the person knows that they can ask mm -hmm. uh, let's see request and receive information from the psychologist about their qualifications which may include mm -hmm. i like that is that Ms. is that Riscate? helpful Ms. Riscate? yes That's good. Thanks for bringing that up, Mr. Scotty. Mm -hmm. I would just put a comma after qualifications. Yes, thank you. I have no further changes. Okay, moving on to page four. Are there any comments or edits on page four. Okay, moving on to page five.
comments or edits here. Okay, moving on to page six. Comments or edits here. All right, page seven. Comments or edits here? Mm. <clears throat> Page eight. And I believe we, we have the number four on page eight because we weren't sure by the time this was all edited what page that would land on. So if you see a four highlighted, that's the reason for that. Any comments on page eight? Thanks for explaining the four highlighted. <laughs> sure. Okay, moving on to page nine. Any comments or edits on page nine? Moving on to page 10. Sorry, I do have one question on page nine. Right. 10, okay. Sorry, there's a, my neighbor. That's okay. Um, where it says individual therapy. Um, maybe it's before that. I have to prepare. Uh, it's the individual therapy, which is oh below that. I guess page right there. Oh, uh, oh, 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 yeah. Okay, so keep going a little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more. Next page. I guess eleven. <laughs> Mm, no, it's it starts with individual therapy. So, what to expect during an individual group therapy session? It's below. The, okay, there. So, for the first one, during the first session, the psychologist may use information you have provided on the community. Um. Oh, actually, never mind. I read it differently before, so I read it more like they may not take an intake form, but never mind. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so moving on to page 11. Any comments or edits here? Okay, moving on to page 12. Any comments or edits here? Page 13. Any comments or edits here? Page 14. Comments or edits here? Okay, moving on to 15. Any comments here? 16. And 17, uh, this whole last piece was uh, deleted, so. Okay, so um, I think that completes our uh, committee review. Um, aside from um, public comment, I think we would just need a motion to um, approve the draft 
for presenting to the board at the November meeting. Sounds good. Do I have a motion to approve the current draft for the November meeting? Uh, this is Anna Escate. I move. Okay, and I am happy to second that motion. Mr. Moderator, can you please open up for public comment regarding this agenda item? We are now open for public comment on the draft. If you would like to make a comment, please type the word comment into the Q&A box in the lower right hand corner of the screen and send that comment to all participants. Dial in users, please dial star three to raise your hand and we will call on people in the order we have requests. And our first request comes from Nadia, who said, I agree with Dr. Rogers. Maybe start out with the first sentence from the third paragraph. Nadia, we're going to give you a chance to unmute your microphone and tell us in your own words uh, or tell us verbally. I was um, referring to her um, to, to the to the changes in the document. So I apologize. I put it in the, the incorrect spot. <laughs> Yes, I was agreed with that change. Okay, I was just gonna ask you, does this um, capture what you were thinking, how we changed it? Hang on just a moment, Nadia. It, it does, thank you. Thank you. And that appears to be our only request for public comment at the moment. Do you wish to return to the agenda? Yes, thank you very much. Dr. Tate? Yes. Uh, Dr. Rogers here. Um, while we are on the first paragraph in that first sentence, um, I'm sorry, the second sentence, uh, I'm just looking at something that might need to be shifted grammatically. It says, perhaps you're seeking treatment for depression, stress. Um, I would take out the word or, since we have or on the other side of anxiety. Mm -hmm. Depression, stress, anxiety, comma, or a better understanding of yourself or any changes you may be facing. Yes. Okay. That is all. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And thank you to your editorial eye. I appreciate it. Of course. Um, so we have a motion and a second. Ms. Pruteau, can you please call the roll? Yes. Uh, Riscate? Aye. Rogers? Aye. Tate? Aye. Thank you. Perfect. Motion passes. And we're moving on to agenda item number 12. Review and propose edits to draft survey questions to assess barriers to telehealth. And before we just dive in, I wanted to give a little background regarding this agenda item. Ms. Sorek, Mr. Fu and I discussed this in 2020 as a response to the pandemic and nationwide protest. We wanted to look at how the Board of Psychology conducts business and do an assessment of what access to psychological services look like right now. So we decided to draft survey questions to assess barriers to telehealth. The survey questions have been created and are provided in your agenda materials for review. Ms. Sorek, would you like to add anything? Um, yeah, sure. I would just like to thank uh, the work of the committee on this important topic. Um, and I would also like to give a shout out to Ms. Chung, um, who provided valuable input and feedback on the draft survey questions. Um, and then included in the media materials are the, the draft questions. Once the committee has taken a look, we can present uh, an, uh, an approved draft to present at the board at the November meeting. Perfect. So there are questions. There's a consumer. Uh, there are consumer questions and provider questions. So I'd like you to open it up to the committee for questions, comments, um, edits. <laughs> Do we like the questions? So this is uh, Mrs. Scott. Um, for the consumers, I want. I'm not sure where it would go, but I think it should be included that sometimes a barrier is that the therapist they're talking to is not technologically savvy either. <laughs> um, 
maybe on number four. It would be an option, something worded like provider. Uh, Provider's not savvy with technological. <laughs> more like a delayed session due to provider not being, or something like that. <laughs> Question. This is Dr. Rogers just piggybacking on uh, what Ms. Rascate is saying. If we do have um, letter D for other, is there, can we add a line for people to write or type in what other is for them, which might include um, the therapist is not technologically savvy or um, whatever else it might be that's not captured in A through C? Is that, hmm. is that a possibility? Just so we can get more uh, clear yeah. information from consumers about um, what these barriers might be. That's a good question, Ms. Oric. I don't, I don't you know what you... I I was trying to think of a way that we could actually um, similarly put a Microsoft Word version of these questions up so we can make edits. Um, Mr. Glassbeagle, do you happen to have um, a copy of the Word version? I am this? looking right now. Bear with me just a minute while I get there. Yes, I think I do. So the consumers one, right? Correct. Perfect. Yep, I'll share my screen right now. And then if you can edit that document um, as uh, the questions were coming or the edits were coming in so we can and maybe make the size bigger so everybody could see that. Okay. Okay, and then I believe uh, was it Dr. Rogers you had um, a suggested edit? Oh, yes. Uh, for number four and perhaps number five um, in letter D where it says other, is there a way to add a space for people to be able to respond about what other might be for them? because people may have um, a variety of barriers that haven't necessarily been captured by A through C, and that will, would give them an opportunity to speak directly to what those barriers are for them. I, I believe it should be doable once uh, it is turned into like a fillable, we can turn into a fillable PDF. I don't know okay. how um, Ms. Sork intends to distribute this, but um, I've put a note uh, right at the title to see if we can make C others or other uh, into a fillable field. Okay. Yeah, it will be a survey monkey um, survey. So oh, okay. um, it should be an open field that people can fill in. Okay, so even I was just looking at number six as well, where it says additional okay. barriers, so they'll be able to fill in there. Yeah, yeah, I, okay. I was going to say that they have a place to write some other barriers that we haven't thought of either. Okay. Um, and this is Mr. Scott. I was saying that on number four, if we could add an option that acknowledges that sometimes the technical barrier comes from the provider. And, and that would be other outside of the allowing the other field to have a fillable. So you'd, you'd want like a, a D to be a separate option. To yeah, select. separate option. And I think that'll help because the next survey is for the providers themselves. So I, I just think making it stand out to really see what support is needed on both parts would. Stand and up. how would you how would you like that to read? Um, would it could does it make sense to say proficiency um, or tech, technological proficiency of the provider using telehealth? Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense for me. 
-hmm. And I don't know if we need to acknowledge like um proficiency like delays a session. I don't know if that's needed, but I that I mean that should be implied, so I think that's fine. Yeah, that works. Good suggestion, Mr. Scott. Thank you. Any other comments for either survey? Hi, Dr. Tate, Dr. Rogers. I um it's kind of a question just to see if something like this fits here, but I'm just thinking about um, the questions that we had earlier about um, repeat test takers and its impact in the BIPOC community. Is there, would it be helpful if we acknowledge um, psychosocial barriers to telehealth? And I don't know if that would be captured in number six where it says additional barriers, but I'm just wondering in terms of um, clients uh, wanting a diverse representation of providers and not having that, if that is a barrier to telehealth. I don't know, um, but throwing that out for consideration um, with the committee. Any thoughts about that? I yeah, I think that would be great to add because then it it just like really drives a point and shows that when telehealth is provided, maybe certain psychologists are not available via telehealth as well, mm -hmm. and it'll just give us something else to like really look out for and research. Um, I think it should be its own question though. Like, mm -hmm. okay. Do you want it to be a, a, a BIPOC question or something or worded differently? Uh, well, my thought was when I was um, considering posing the question, I was thinking, are there uh, systemic and or psychosocial barriers to tel telehealth? Um, and I don't know if we need to have it as a forced choice, like A, B, or C, but maybe creating um, a fillable box for people I think to, to just name name that um, yeah. if that is an impediment to them accessing care in that way. This may be a, an interesting data set if we have this be a yes or no question. Oh, so maybe yes, no, and if yes, then giving giving them an opportunity. Yes. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah, I like that. So would it be something like uh let's see, six having trouble finding a relatable provider or or hmm. Or experiencing, I'm trying to think of a general thing because all I'm thinking is like experiencing microaggressions from provider or something like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or what are the barriers in finding a telehealth provider you feel safe with? I don't know. <laughs> Well, we ask about confidence in number two, mm -hmm. receiving services. Um, but that can what, be if we, what if we defined a systemic or psychosocial, um, giving an example, and then that way it would better inform the answers we get? Are there suggestions on like that. possible um, descriptors there. Hmm. Um, uh, maybe like such as uh, language barriers could be one. Socioeconomic mm -hmm. challenges. 
lack of diverse representation. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Tate, you said socioeconomic something. I'm sorry. Oh, did I have barriers? Maybe. Oh, or no. Barriers. No, maybe I didn't. Wait, hold on. Socioeconomic. Mm. Say factors. Would someone read this though and think it's it's talking about the providers? Or lack of diverse providers, if we mm -hmm. make it stand out more. Sure, sure. Are, are we putting that as an example or am lack of diverse providers somewhere? Is, is that an example right here? Uh, yes. yes. I think oh, it thank is. you. Mm -hmm. And if yes, we would need a other box to to explore what what uh what they feel that barrier is. Oh, instead of it being number seven. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah, because I think that might well. No, it could be number seven, but it's somewhere it would have to say if yes, move on to number seven or something like that. Or if you answered yes to number six. Mm hmm. Yeah, that works. Too. And I'm wondering if this would be a place, it just feels like a place, but I don't have a specific example where um, specific disabilities might mm -hmm. want to be in this list. Um, yes, that's a big one. Yeah. You don't have to say specific, but just, I mean, I, I can't come up with one right now, but I'm trying to, you know. Well, like so. speech, uh, hearing impaired, like mm -hmm. speech yeah. software, like yep. you know, eyesight, um, physical impairment. Should we say or reasonable accommodations? Oh, yes. Yeah, Instead of like, disabilities, mm -hmm. yeah, like that, like but. that, Miss Sorek. Thank you for that. So I think that would capture uh, quite a chunk of mm -hmm. other issues, and then you have an area to elaborate. And I do like that we're still um, not asking too many questions, so our mm -hmm. likelihood of participation <laughs> <laughs> still be on the higher side. <laughs> so absolutely. Why don't you ask <laughs> um so uh Dr. Tate, would you like to open um this survey out for public comment and then we can move on to the next one? Or oh, that's a good idea. Let's do that. Mr. Moderator, can you open up public comment for this specific survey? We are now opening for public comment on this specific survey. If you would like to make a comment, please type the word comment into the Q&A box in the lower right hand corner of the screen and send that comment to all participants. Dial in users, please dial star three to raise your hand and we will call on people in the order we have requests. And we have a request from Arasali um, who has said a few different things. We're gonna give you an opportunity to unmute Hi, thank you for allowing me to comment. Um, for question number six, and I see that um, one of these is, uh, okay, are systemic or psychosocial barriers to telehealth? Um, uh, oh, I was it, was it changed? I, I know that it said, um, well, what I was thinking is, what type of barriers have you faced in accessing services via telehealth and making a, a multiple choice question? I'm reading my comment here, my apologies. Um, so I've designed surveys in the community and, it, and clarification question, is this survey going out to consumers or who's the audience for this survey? This uh, would be co for consumers, yes. Consumers, okay. So consumers, um, may not know and so it depends on how you're disseminating the survey who has access to the survey 
is the survey, how will the survey be disseminated? Are you going out into the communities? Are you going to, um, well, one who has access to this, right? And so I know from my community work that um, individuals may not understand what systemic and psychosocial barriers are. I know because I give presentations on this is what this means. And so when you're asking a question, perhaps uh, wording it like what type of barriers have you faced? Uh, sometimes we call these, you know, systemic and psychosocial barriers, for example, please select all that apply. So you make it a multiple choice. Um, and I know that here I gave example access to technology, which is already a question in uh, uh, number four. Um, so perhaps since that's already addressed there, then that may not be needed. Um, but I put in the comments just a, um, a suggestion and also clarifying being mindful of the language that we use um, that sometimes can be very academic and we understand it as providers and people who have, you know, um, gone to school and understand this. But um, the question is, who are the consumers that we are surveying? So are these the worried well? Are these um, people who have access to resources? Or are we going into the communities um, that are underserved, um, which is, I think, ideally what we would want to focus on. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the comment. That was our only requester for comment. Um, Dr. Tate, this is Noreen. Uh, could I make a couple comments that have occurred to me? Absolutely. Uh, I might suggest that if it's going out to consumers, you have a definition of telehealth because I think the licensed community has an idea of what that means, but consumers may not. That's a suggestion. Another suggestion is where, uh, in res response to question number one for consumers where they are uh, asked if they're either a client of services or an advocate for services, you might include prospective client because there may be people who haven't who who might like to seek services but can't because of some of the barriers or aren't sure because of perceived barriers so that's a suggestion um and i don't know where you might want to include this it might just be something that can people can put for other but in the suggestions about the uh, barriers, maybe add something like, the, there may be people who would be interested, but they don't have a private space from which they could call or, or from which they could seek the services. So a lack of privacy or lack of uh, yeah. uh, you know, confidentiality. Um, and you, Reasonable accommodations is something that we're very familiar with, uh, and I don't know if the if if you're maybe want to say if there's a lack of reasonable accommodations or a lack of uh, uh, something that maybe explains that a little bit more fully. So that's those were my comments. Well, thank you. I'm hearing loud and clear that we're we're too academic. <laughs> um, so especially on number six, I'm looking at it right now. To, but thank you, Noreen, for the comments. Uh, Dr. Tate, I have a question. I'm just following up with uh, Ms. Mark's comments and uh, Dr. Araceli. Uh, will there be um, like an introduction to this survey. So, um, you know, we're looking, you know, we're trying to assess what these barriers are, obviously maybe not in that academic language, but maybe we could put some of that information in the introduction, just sort of preparing um, participants for what they might, um, what they might experience in the questions that are being asked, and maybe that's where we could put some of the um, more 
where we could put more layman's terms mm -hmm. um, so that when they get to these questions, they'll be able to say, okay, well, when we say systemic or psychosocial, we really mean this sort of as uh, Dr. Araceli was saying. A more of a detailed cover sheet, maybe mm -hmm. with information pertaining to the questions in case they need more definitions or details. Right, because I'm I'm hearing what Ms. Sork is saying about making the questionnaire or the survey short enough so that people will um, actually take the time to complete it, but also being thorough enough um, and clear enough in what we're asking. So yes, having some sort of information on the front end, um, just so we're more clear. Because I, I definitely want to make sure that we're asking the right kinds of questions in ways that consumers will be able to understand. Right. Oh, absolutely. Okay. I'm going to suggest that if we can try and keep this to, um, you know, a page or a page and a half, um, right. if we can do an intro paragraph um, saying that you know, we're collecting the information um, and we're hoping to gather what some of the barriers uh, to telehealth are. Um, telehealth is a means of, you know, providing psychological services uh, by electronic means. Um, and then if there's any other terminology, we can put a footnote um, to define any other terms that um, may not be accessible to all consumers um, and go from there, if that's something. Yeah, no, I hear you loud and clear to keep it shorter and it's going to get us more responses. And I'm, I'm seeing in my head how SurveyMonkey works and I think usually it's like it's kind of like a PowerPoint. So you have your opening slide, which would say like, this is a survey that gathers blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and, and we could even say like, here's how many questions there are. And I think it tells you as you go along the way, the progress you're making, which I don't know about you all, but that's always a good incentive for me to know how much time I um, honestly want to put <laughs> into a survey. Um, having that progress uh, ticker is is a useful incentive uh, for my participation. So um, maybe we can do that and then have at the end some of those uh, items defined. And it sounds like maybe we can go back and do a little more work on this survey um, before bringing it back to the board. Um, if if you all may be comfortable um, delegating to staff to kind of fine tune this a little bit more, if you're comfortable with the overall tenor of the questions and the options, we can go ahead and do that and um, prepare something for November. Just that throwing would, that out as another option. No, that would be great. I hate to hold on to this for another year. So I'd like, I feel like we've been holding on to this for so long and I'd really love to get the data. So. Absolutely. And I'm backing up a little bit. Mr. Moderator, do I still have the public comment open? Did I? Um, I have. <laughs> I continually leave the question and comment, uh, the question and answer box open and then call for it uh, whenever you decide. Okay. Okay. I just, I remember I opened it, but I wanted to make sure I got all the comments for this. Um, there are no pending comments. Thank you. I appreciate you. <laughs> um, Dr. Rogers and Ms. Riscate, any thoughts on Ms. Sorek's suggestion about uh, letting the staff fine tune this and bring it to the meeting in November. Yeah, I, uh, oh, hi, this is uh, Shakonda Rogers. Um, I like that suggestion. I understand Dr. Tate, you're wanting to get the survey out so that we can have the data. Um, I really do appreciate the feedback from Dr. Araceli, especially on question six. I really, really like um, 
the language that's used there. So I, I just want to make sure that when we do send this survey out that we get it right. Um, so I, I don't mind um, delegating it to staff to do a little bit more work on it to fine tune it some. Um, yeah, so I, I, I'm okay with it. Okay, and it does need some fine tuning. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. Rescate, any thoughts? Uh, yes, I agree. I think I think it's important, and it's it, you know, given that telehealth is a big thing now, I think it's important to get this out as soon as we can. But of course, making sure that it captures everything we need it to. Um, so I agree with presenting it to the to the board and having the staff look at it. Um, so I'm thinking. Oh, so I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. One more thing. Um, what I think will be great is um, board staff working on it more. And then of course, when we present it to the board and um, the participants that will be participating in the board meeting or attendees in the audience, um, being able to give their feedback as well. So I uh, really appreciate the time and uh, intentionality we're devoting to creating something that will give us meaningful data. Thank you. So this one is the consumer survey. We still have the provider survey. I'm wondering if it's easier. Noreen, can we, um, I'm sorry, Ms. Marks, um, move on to looking at the provider survey and making a motion at the end, or should I make the motion right now with this project right in front of us? I think you have, um some flexibility here they it, it's the same item so i yeah. think it might be and what also occurs to me is as you look at the survey for providers it may actually trigger a question about uh for the consumers so i would suggest you you treat it as one item okay perfect thank you so any more comments from the committee on the consumer survey, and then we can move on to the provider and edit that a little bit. Okay, back to the provider survey. It is showing the provider survey, right? Now it is, yes, thank you. Perfect, yep, no problem. Okay. Um, any uh, committee suggestions, edits for this survey? And I'll give you a second to check it over. Well, hi, this is Ms. Escate. For number three, option C, appropriateness of telehealth for certain client populations. I'm just wondering if that needs a follow up, like, because I feel like what would what does that mean? <laughs> I believe this came up um, when we were talking generally about the survey with the board and uh, Dr. Kasuga wanted to make sure that we included something in the survey to address times in which telehealth may not be appropriate for a certain client population. Um, in particular behavior analytical kind of work, um, uh, assessments that may need to be done in person. Um, so I, I believe that's where that item came from. And we can always uh, retool the language there. Okay, so for like certain diagnosis or... Um... Okay. Well, psychological assessments, um, mm -hmm. you know, some you have to be hands on manipulating things. Mm. So telehealth wouldn't necessarily work. So maybe just for that one, you can put, you know, for example, 
certain psychological assessments or um, and Dr. Rogers chime in. It's looking good over here. <laughs> <laughs> Any other examples for this uh, 3C? I was trying to think, I can't think of. Um... Yeah. Psych assessment's the one thing that would mm -hmm. be good. Okay, I guess we'll keep thinking. And any other training barriers? I'm looking at number five. And I, and I know other is there, but I'm wondering if we're missing a big one. Mr. Glasspiegel, on 5B, can you change two to of? Thank you. Any other suggestions, Dr. Rogers, Ms. Riscate? We can also add an intro uh, paragraph to this survey. Um, I'm, the terminology piece may not be as um, imperative on this one as the consumer um, survey, but we can always add terminology um, definitions on this one if that's what the committee would like. Yeah, this one is using all terms that a provider would know and use and um i am not certain if uh we need to include this but i'm just thinking about the question we added to the previous survey about psychosocial barriers um those might also be relevant for providers in some way so maybe giving folks an opportunity to weigh in on what those barriers might be could be helpful like a separate question or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. similar to how we added the additional question for consumers and should i take out my comment for an intro paragraph or leave it i think oh, you like that a few sentences about yeah I think it's appropriate. Perfect. And then do you want me to grab quest, uh, the psychosocial question from the uh, yes. consumer survey? Yes. Okay, one second. I would modify number six just a little bit. And again, I guess that's um, where board staff can um, play around with this and modify it some. Um, I'm thinking about where it says lack of diverse providers. Right. Um, some of those other factors might still be important. Um, and also thinking about um, if you serve a population that may have their own financial barriers to accessing telehealth, then that will then impact um, you know, that the clinician's capacity for revenue revenue generation, right? So um, there there can be all kinds of factors um, that that might be a psychosocial or systemic barrier for providers. So. I'm referrals if mm -hmm. 
referring out and you're looking for a specific, you know, constellation for your mm -hmm. client, that may be hard to find. Mm -hmm. Dr. So, Tate, I just want to make sure I'm correct. Am I adding referral to this? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. We're just talking. Um, yeah, something about referral. Um, Dr. Rogers, help me out. Um, so are you saying, Dr. Tate, um, because of the barriers that certain populations may have, if those, if yeah. that's the population that you serve, they may not get referred to you because they can't access care with you. Am I understanding that correctly? That is one. And then the other is if you have someone you need to refer and you know they need a A, B, and C type mm -hmm. and that is not a, for whatever reason, you can't find that on telehealth because they're not on or, you know, just mm -hmm. a, it's a barrier. Okay, I see. Yes. Both ways. So. Mm -hmm. So it'd be a uh, referral difficulties. And I'm totally open to wordsmithing. Well, I'm, I'm just thinking about um, the lack of providers in general. Um, I, I know my and practice is full. My colleagues practices are full. So it's, it's really difficult for people to just be able to access care um, right. these days because um, yeah, and most everyone health, is at capacity. Right, and I think most mental health providers, if they can, are stretching themselves a little mm -hmm. thin, mm -hmm. and um, that's a problem. Sure. So I don't know. If that would a uh, lack of access to providers? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Ms. Sorek. <laughs> You're welcome. So instead of referral difficulties or adding it in as an additional. I think instead of, is that right? Sure. That would work. And it was lack of providers, is that correct? Access to care, lack of providers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or lack of available providers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I think there's, I mean, there's numbers which we can see through data that our number of licensees has remained relatively static um, through time. But I think availability is definitely an issue because there may be enough, but not necessarily that they're accepting new clients. Mm -hmm. And if the number has remained static, but the need has grown based on the stressors of these last few years, right. um, <laughs> that certainly impacts care. Do you want to add that as one more example is um, increased need um, you know, based on, uh, you know, current, um, I don't know, I was going to say issues or current, um, like the climate, what, what is yes. the, the mm -hmm. climate? Does that make sense? I'm sure there's yes. another way to say it, yes. but. be societal climate I'm I'm thinking about um something related to supply and demand, right? The supply has remained static, but the demand has increased. I don't know if that feels too um, academic or cognitive. Mm 
Well, it's absolutely true, though. Mm -hmm. Aren't enough mental health professionals to handle the capacity. Mm -hmm. And we're also at question eight, and I don't want it to get too cumbersome. Yes. Um, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if this goes in question six or um, if there is a need for an additional question, but just thinking about the barriers. Um, and we were talking about the toll that this has taken on providers. I don't know if we need a question that addresses um, fatigue, right? There's Zoom fatigue, there's compassion fatigue, there is, um, what's another one that I was thinking about? Emotional exhaustion. Yes, just, <laughs> yes, just, oh, burnout, right? Just um, even if I have the, um, capacity on my caseload, like I could take on one more or two more or five more. Um, logistically, I could, but um, perhaps providers are at max capacity emotionally, right, and can't take on more. So I don't know if um, that needs to be another barrier or if that can be something that people add on in number eight, but I feel like that's really important. Um, what? Because we need our providers to be well, right, in order to care for uh, the folks that they are serving. Could we um, add another, oh, sorry. Oh, I was just going to ask if having a question, is provider burnout um, uh, a barrier to telehealth? Yes, mm -hmm. no, if yes. Sure, yes. Please explain. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ms. I was just thinking that's kind of a term that seems to be pretty across the board. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, now you guys are getting making it longer now. Listen, I'm <laughs> done. I'm not going to say anything else. I am muting myself right now. Uh, this is Mr. Scott, Mr. Scott. So along the same lines as that question, I, I was just thinking more of like, emphasizing like do you feel supported in your own mental health <laughs> um but maybe just saying provider burnout is okay i like the support question about mental health though i just don't want it to get too long or no one wants to answer any of the questions But we do have the last question where you can add anything you want, mm -hmm. which does help. Have we captured at least a chunk of the issues for a provider in telehealth? I think so. And Ms. Sorek, is there enough there for you and the staff to? Yeah, I, I think I've 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 got um, a good grasp of kind of what you guys are looking for, and um, hopefully um, we can uh, elaborate a little. Having the intro paragraph that's targeted towards each of the different um, audience members on the surveys, and then. Um, adding the definitions on the consumer part, um, and then um, if there's any additional uh, fine tuning that uh, we see as we go through this, we'll um, add that and provide it at the November meeting if that's uh, the motion that the committee approves. That and maybe good. just go out to public comment on uh, this survey and then uh, the committee can talk about next step. I like that idea. Um, Mr. Moderator, can you please open up public comment? 
Absolutely. We are now taking public comment on these edits. If you would like to make a comment, please type the word comment into the Q&A box in the lower right-hand corner of the screen and send that comment to all participants. Dial-in users, please dial star 3 to raise your hand. We will call on people in the order we have requests. Um, Araceli has uh, several inputs to give. Uh, we're sending you a request to unmute your microphone. Hi, thank you so much for the opportunity to comment. Um, I believe for question one, my suggestion was including a category, and I don't know how the survey will be uh, disseminated, um, but including a category to include unlicensed individuals who are no longer able to practice as a registered psychological associate due to not getting licensed within the six year period and losing their privilege to practice. Um, I know uh, several friends, colleague friends that this has happened to or have been at risk of this and they are still in the process of pursuing licensure as you know, we had discussed the EPPP, but they're just not practicing as a, as a therapist um, because of that status. Um, but they are still, I think it's a population that we should, you know, still examine. Um, for number five, I'm not sure if I understood the question correctly. What are the training barriers to telehealth? Um, and let's see, lack of formal study in advanced program. So the thing that came to mind was, um, I think, this may be unrelated, my, my suggestion actually. Um, and then for the question about burnout and in, in, in the field, you know, it something about that speaks to the burnout, um, the moral injury, the compassion fatigue. And I think the moral injury, I think that's one of the things that I faced early in um, the work setting that I'm in. Uh, I believe that somebody mentioned that the supply is static, but the demand has increased. And that was the case in, in terms of wait lists and saying, sure, we can, you know, we can get you in for an assessment in three, four weeks. And then your admission would be on this blah, blah, blah. And so that was a moral injury for myself. Um, which was contributing to, you know, burning out and the compassion fatigue and also to speak to the expectations and requirements for productivity in a non private practice setting. So hospital settings, community mental health centers, um, a lot of people are fleeing to private practice cash pay because one of the insurance reimbursements or very poor re uh, reimbursement and folks unable to pay um, full fee. And so we're losing a lot of clinicians um, uh, that are moving from these centers to private practice cash pay. So that could also be um, a question to be added. Thank you. And that was our only requester for comment. Perfect, thank you. Any response to the comments that we just had to the committee? I think they're all spot on. Thank you so much, Dr. Lopez, for your feedback and your comments. They're very helpful. Mr. Glassbeagle, did you, were you able to uh, document <laughs> those comments so we can include them? I, I was not, as I wasn't sure if the committee was going to be accepting any. Okay. This is the moderator, uh, a reminder that this is recorded. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, Ms. Riscate, do you feel like the comments should be included? I just wanna make sure that we give direction to the staff. Um, I think we could include it and in, cause they're gonna be reviewing it again and then maybe other opinions might come up. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I, I agree. It's awesome. Any other comments? Dr. Rogers, Ms. Riscate? No additional comment. Well, 
I was about to say no additional comments. I lied. Um, I, I appreciate the robust discussion. This has been um, incredibly helpful just in thinking about uh, the practice of psychology, um, especially now that we are in uh, this territory of telehealth and telemedicine um, and just getting clarity on uh, what's working and what uh, impediments there are on, on both sides. So I'm grateful for the discussion. Thank you. Perfect. And I appreciate the discussion and I appreciate the comments. So um, these surveys are going to be very all encompassing and that's what we need because we really would like this data. Um, if Dr. So, Tate, real yes. quick, um, just wanted to make sure we have direction. Um, because the public comment was substantive and um, my kind of uh, takeaway from today is more fine tuning. Um, I just want to make sure I'm capturing what um, you all would like to add to this provider survey based on the public comment. So if we can, um, if we can get that well, before. Dr. Rogers, you're my words. Can you? Uh... Sum it up. Can we just get Dr. Lopez? Oh. <laughs> I think she articulated all of it beautifully. And I, I would hate to butcher her comments, but I think they're incredibly useful. Um, <laughs> sorry, Dr. Lopez, we're bringing you in. <laughs> there were several, so. I hope she's still here. Her hand has been raised. Um, Mr. Bowie, can you uh, allow her to unmute herself? Hi, thank you so much. This is my first time commenting, so I appreciate everybody's willingness yeah, to well, listen. We're happy. I've never done this before. <laughs> so thank well, you. Well, and, uh, what would be helpful is just to give us kind of the bullet points of your suggestions um, and it will help the staff um, incorporate them for our meeting in the future. Yeah, I think what if I were to conceptualize what my comments would be to include diverse voices and to uh, to include marginalized voices, which are the unlicensed folks. And I was one of those. And so our our opinion also is important because we're on the fringe of the field after having worked for so long and sacrificed and have so much debt to be able to do legally you know in the state of california what we are trained and love to do and so it's just important to include our voice so even just including a category and being able to disseminate it to folks like i once was you know and also addressing the the wait, wait, wait. injury. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, hold on. So when you're talking about that, what, so under one, you want a D to be a, an additional category. What would you like that called? What would, um, so it would be, um, unlicensed individual and it could be two categories continuing to pursue licensure and, uh, you know, still pursuing licensure. Um, I'm not sure quite how to capture that. Uh, continue to pursue licensure, unlicensed individual. Um, Is it how, to, how much um, are there, so the other thing that's happening that I've noticed is that there are individuals who were able to obtain a master's degree where they could get licensed at the master's level and they also have a doctorate. And what I'm finding is that the folks that have not been able to pass the EPPP, they kind of give up, they give up actually, they give up and they get licensed at the master's level. And so then they, they don't practice as psychologists, but they practice as an LCSW or, you know, I'm not sure what the other license letters are. Um, but I think those voices still matter here. And so just a category that includes, you know, unlicensed individual who is no longer able to practice because they exceeded the six year mark 
um, but they're still continuing to pursue licensure. Would um, unlicensed individual, do you see what Mr. Glassbeagle's type, the continuing to pursue licensure, or could we put in, in there decided not to pursue? Are, are you trying to capture both or, or, or is the um, one? I think to make it just simpler, and I agree, we, you know, we, I myself, having been in research, we had a lot of questions, and so we don't want to oversaturate the respondent. So I think just unlicensed individual um, continuing to pursue licensure, comma, um, um, decided not to pursue, or uh, I'm not sure. I also need help with wordsmithing here. <laughs> if I can um, um, ask, maybe Ms. Chung can help us uh, craft something that, because um, what we want to do is we want to make sure, um, you know, we're a consumer protection agency. We don't want to um, craft something that is somehow catered to unlicensed psychology um, or somehow a good point. appearing to an endorse that. Um, uh, so I'm wondering if there's, oh, aside from supervised trainee, um, if there uh, is a different or additional way we can kind of expand on that, because what we want to make sure is these are the folks that are sanctioned providers of psychological um, services through telehealth. Um, so we Absolutely. tried to capture those through the first three categories, but I'm not sure if there's a way to better explain C that will yeah. kind of get at where you guys would like to go. I think that's an excellent point. Um, that's absolutely correct. And so perhaps, um, perhaps speaking to these individuals that do have the doctorate and they are licensed at a master's level. So I don't know what they could be classified as. Um, could it be other? Can we do sure. it? Actually, yeah, <laughs> that is the best answer choice. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Yes, you can write other it. is <laughs> beautiful. Can we okay. say other licensed professional or registered professional? Again, I want to be very sensitive mm -hmm. to our endorsement of any unlicensed mm -hmm. other activity. licensed professional is good okay, okay. that captures it okay. perfect should i keep the slash register to remove that i think other licensed professional captures it myself i'm open to hearing comments does that look good again for taking my opinion into consideration i um, um grateful yeah we appreciate the the input um and so i want to make sure that captures and i apologize for intervening on uh the terminology for one um i want to make sure um dr lopez is able to let us know the other kind of bullets um and if the first bullet was kind of what we were talking about in one I'm sorry, could you clarify the question? She's um, just making sure that um, the clarification for number one is captured in 1D for you. Yes, and I, I think for other, if we could just do the semicolon and people can, or I don't know if that's a default option to enter, you know, your title or. I think if you're using SurveyMonkey or any other one, usually that is a default. Perfect. And any other bullets, Dr. Lopez? Um, I believe there was a conversation about um, burnout and and having the bandwidth for providers to take care of themselves. Um, I don't know what that question number was. So eight has burnout. Um, okay. Um. And it gives an area for an explanation. Would that capture okay. what your thoughts are? 
Um, it just depends on what you're looking for, because if you're looking for just a yes or no, you know, dichotomous variable, then that's okay. But if you want to understand more what about it, then perhaps, um, have you experienced burnout? Yes or no? If yes, then, okay, you're saying explain, um, but it could be also categories, but I think explain would capture that as well. Yeah, just, I think for the purpose of this survey, um, explain is helpful because right now mm -hmm. when you talk to providers, the burnout list <laughs> is so extensive. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I don't think we really would be able to capture everybody, but this gives an opportunity um, for us to pull out who's experiencing it and kind of the why regarding you telehealth. Know, right. You know what I just thought about, and I don't know if this is captured elsewhere, but um, severity of um, like imminent risk. I know that um, some, for example, intensive outpatient programs initially offer telehealth and then they move to in-person due to risk factors, safety risk factors. And so I know that that has been a barrier for some consumers. So perhaps um, that could be a question is um, safety risk a barrier to providing telehealth services. Okay. I don't know if we have room or space now we're at 10. <laughs> if yeah. not then it's it's okay i just thought about that and so no, I, um, I appreciate it um i don't want to get can too I far uh, dr tate and dr lopez i think that could also apply if you could scroll up mr glass spiegel um i'm wondering if it can be captured in um question three letter c um, appropriateness of telehealth for certain client populations. So maybe we could include um, safety considerations here. Oh, that's a great idea. So we still capture it without um, adding an additional question. I love it. Thank you for spotting that. Yeah, I think we're getting too long now. So <laughs> I, I hesitate to add anything else. Um, thank you, Dr. Lopez, for your comments. Did we uh, address your bullet points? Yes, thank you very much. Perfect, thank you. Um, I do have to run, so thank you so much for the opportunity oh, to comment. I appreciate course. it. Thank you for your input. Okay, bye. Ms. Frascate, Dr. Rogers, any last comments, suggestions? And if not, a motion would be amazing. I have no additional comments or questions. I am happy to make a motion after Ms. Riscate makes her final comments or asks final questions. Perfect. I have no further comments or questions. Oh, Dr. Rogers. Okay. Um, I make a motion that, um, what are we doing? We are uh, passing or Referring the questionnaire and the survey back to staff, board staff for additional edits, um, modifications as necessary. And we will wait for the board and staff to present the updated survey questions to the full board at the next board meeting in November. Does that cover it, Ms. Marks? Uh, I, I think it does. I, I, um, I just want to be clear that the boards that the direction is the board staff is going to make the edits as uh, consistent with the discussion and that those, uh, edited or, and new questions will be presented to the board for their its approval in November. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay. And I'm happy to second that. <laughs> um, let's see. What am I missing? Oh, and we already did public comment. Do I have to open it up again for public comment? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes I do. Let's do that, Mr. Moderator. I'm sorry. It's lunchtime. 
<laughs> I don't think Mr. Bowie is here, so I will try my best to say his uh, sentence of we are now open for public comment. Uh, if you would like to make a comment, please type in comment and uh, let us wait a few moments to see if there's anybody that would like to make public comment. I have been watching the attendees list and I don't see any hands come up and I have not seen any comments requesting public comment. Uh, let me know if you'd like me to return and close public comment and return to the presentation. Yes, that would be great. And you did a great job. Thank you. Um, so we have a motion and a second. Ms. Proufto, can you please call the roll? Scott Tay. Aye. Rogers. Aye. Tate. Aye. Thank you. Perfect. Motion passes and we're moving on to agenda item number 13, recommendations for agenda items for future committee meetings. The committee may not discuss or take action on any raised during this public comment section, except to decide whether to place the matter on the agenda of a future meeting. Can you please open up public comment at this time? And I believe Mr. Bowie is back, but uh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, go, go ahead for your uh, statement. We are open for public comment. If you would like to make a comment, please type the word comment into the Q&A box in the lower right hand corner of the screen. Send that comment to all participants. Dial in users, please dial star three to raise your hand and we will call on people in the order we have requests. We're going to take just a few seconds now to see if we have a request for public comment. Looks like we have one from Dr. Emus. Hold on just a moment. We're going to send you a request to unmute your microphone. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, please. Yes. I just wanted to thank all of you for the tremendous conversation we had today. Uh, I think it was really, really important. It's also important to our uh, department, uh, which is, as you know, uh, very diverse and has uh, diversity needs that are very strong and, and recognized. Um, I would welcome uh, future research in the area of difficulties with passing the EPPP. And I, again, uh, really appreciate uh, the board taking the time and the effort to uh, allow this conversation, stimulate this conversation. Um, it was uh, a very important meeting, I think, and I appreciate being able to be here today. Thank you. Thank you. That was our only request for comment. Perfect. Thank you. And thank you, Dr. Emos, for attending and giving us the great feedback. We appreciate you. Um, back to agenda item number 13. Any committee members have suggestions for future meetings? Dr. Rogers, Mr. Scotte. Um, I just want to make sure that um, what Ms. Sorek spoke about earlier in the meeting is included um, for the next next committee meeting uh, related to developing a campaign that um, specifically outlines what the role of the board is. That's all. And thank you, Dr. Emus, for your comments. We appreciate your presence today. Um, I think it would be great to discuss what kind of content we can share on social media to expand on what's already shared, uh, which is 
meetings, um, job openings, like, for instance, the newsletters, you know, it has articles about mental health, um, so wondering if we could start sharing some of those that relate more to the public um, and are more likely to be read and bring attention to those um, channels. So instead of sharing the, the newsletter, it would be like the article in the newsletter about mental health would be at its own link so we could share it that way and having more content like that. That's interesting. Ms. Sorek, are you understanding the Ms. Rispate's comment? Yeah, I'm not sure how we would do that because it is, um, it, it's in HTML, the link that takes you to the newsletter on our webpage um, to make it ADA accessible. Um, and we usually put in, you know, read about this, that, or the other um, to try and kind of promote what's in the newsletter. Um, and then if you go to a printer friendly version, it's a PDF version of uh, the newsletter. I'm not sure um, that might be uh, staff work intensive to do separate links for separate articles um, mm -hmm. because it's just one document. Um, uh, but we're, I mean, we're always happy to hear if there's other things that, um, you know, the, the board would like us to be, um, you know, putting out on uh, Twitter. We have our uh, licensing timeframes um, that we put out um, whenever we have a press release about an enforcement action that goes out on social media. Mm -hmm. um, and and we work with our partners at DCA as well on on promoting our press releases um, and then uh, job announcements, as you said, newsletters, board meetings, committee meetings, um, uh, regulatory changes. So any kind of uh, activity of the board, we uh, put it on our website and then we also promote it on uh, social media as well. Um, I wanted to quick go back to uh, Dr. Emus mentioned about uh, the work that was discussed today, and I thought I might put in a little ask um, since Dr. Emus um, and her department uh, has quite a number of licensed and registered individuals that work at that department. Um, once the survey is um, finalized and ready to go, I was going to ask um, if Dr. Emus would assist us in getting the provider um, survey out to um, her staff, if that's something that she could help with, because that's a, that's a large number. Um, and as you all know, <laughs> through data, the more uh, data you have available, the more reliable uh, your survey is. So I wanted to uh, put that ask out there to Dr. Emus. Did you want Dr. Emus to respond right now? <laughs> Ms. Ward? If she's available to respond, I'm, I'm, that would be great. Yeah. Hi. Okay. Yes, uh, I think that's a great idea. I know that your um, emails go out to a lot of people uh, who work for the department. It might not reach everybody. What uh, we might want to do is have uh, our training coordinators at the institutions disseminate the materials so that we have more people Maybe we're reaching more people. I do have to run that by my supervisor, though. Could you send me an email with that request? And I would be happy to run it up the chain. Happy to do that. Thank you. You you do have my email. I do. Yes. Okay. Great. Well, please contact me, and um, I'll just make sure that we get permission so that we get that to as many uh, psychologists as possible. Perfect. Thank you. 
Dr. Welch. Any, any other suggestions from committee members? I don't see any hands. Um, Ms. Marks, do I need an official motion to adjourn for the day? This is the uh, moderator. Oh, ooh. go ahead. Sorry. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Bowie. Um, I believe the answer is you do not. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> is that what you're going to say, Ms. Marks? <laughs> uh, yes, that that is correct. Perfect. Well, thank you to everyone, stakeholders, staff, committee members, um, for joining all of us today. Um, it was a very fruitful conversation, and I think we got a lot done. So I hope everyone has a great weekend. Thanks before, again. Before we all disconnect, um, GK is requesting for a comment, has a request to comment. Okay. That's okay. Let's do it. All right. Hold on, GK. We're going to allow you to unmute your microphone. Um, and I just want to make sure why. I'm just curious why uh, the Board of Psychology is limiting itself to social media presence just to Facebook and Twitter. As a professional organization, I think you would be much better off with LinkedIn. LinkedIn is not just a networking for jobs anymore. It's much more professional if anybody has visited it. Recently, they upgraded the services offered and they have beautiful analytics. They actually tell how many people views your post or your article that you put out, how many who are all the people who are viewing it. So you get a much better analytics. And as a professional organization, I will strongly encourage the Board of Psychology to look into LinkedIn as its other option for social media connection because Facebook as you know, just scrolling about people really don't give that much importance compared to LinkedIn, where it's real professionals looking at what we are posting and you get a much better feedback than what you get back from Facebook. I just want to put that out so you can look into it. Thank you. Thank you for the comment. We appreciate it. Um, and thanks for listening today. So again, our meeting is over today. I grateful for all the comments and I hope that everyone has a great weekend and um, hopefully see everyone in November in person in Sacramento. Thank you.